what I plan to do, I'll tell you briefly about myself, tell you about the organization I work for, and then give you some of the real, uh, most recent questions and issues and research projects that we have worked on over the past few months. Um, I, I started by teaching junior and senior high uh, social studies back in Massachusetts. Uh, did it for 11 years, and what Pam said in, in, her, in her introduction is true. I don't know if you heard chicken soup with a P or chicken suit with a T. Uh, it, we're dealing with a chicken suit, and I'll tell you how that worked out. Um, after 11 years of teaching kids, and those of you who are parents or teachers, you know what I'm talking about. My last day of teaching, I walked into a ninth grade class wearing a chicken suit. And I still have photographs of this. Um, Gene, I think you've seen it before. I don't know if Wes has seen the picture, but it wasn't my best day of mental health, but it felt good to wear a chicken suit on my last day. My principal walked in the door and saw me with a chicken suit, and he walked up to me, he shook my hand, and he said, you know, I'm really glad you're getting your leave of absence. And I said, <laughs> so, I said well, I am too. I told the story to Pam, and she was cackling about it for a few minutes. Cackle. Uh, I, I was going to go to law school, um, but uh, I decided, you know, that I would first become a uh, litigation paralegal at a major Boston law firm. I got certified as such. And then a funny thing began, began to happen to me as a litigation paralegal. The more I saw about the practice of law, the less I liked it. And I think, I think it really hit me. Um, I'm sitting in a deposition one day. Our law firm was defending these two I'm sorry, um, our, our law firm was defending a huge multinational company whose name I still can't tell you, but they had two brothers who had worked for them, who had, they had invented this fantastic scientific instrument. The brothers contended that the company for which they worked had stolen the rights and everything else and were leaving them out in the cold. And as the deposition wore on, I came to believe more and more these brothers who everybody thought were sort of wackos, that they were right, and that the big multinational company for which they worked was wrong. Fortunately, it was around that time I met our law firm's law library staff, and I began to hang out with them, and I began to realize, gee, you know, I can, I can work with medical information and legal information and demographic and scientific and everything else. All this information is there for me to work with and I don't have to practice law to do it. And that's really what pulled me into law librarianship. I went to graduate school at UC Berkeley, the school of, uh, back then it was a school of information studies. Uh, and then I began 20 years working in the law firms here in San Francisco. You know, I love my work, I excelled at it. Uh, I felt that I served our clients' needs very well. I made some great friends, including um, our very own Mark Estes. By the way, have you ever seen Mark blush? Mark has been named about a month ago. He was named to the American Association of Law Libraries Hall of Fame, which is a really big deal in our association. So. Um, anyhow, behind all of my happiness and all the money I was making as a law firm librarian, something was missing, and I didn't quite know what it was. Uh, one day I was walking into this building, which at the time was sort of new, and I bumped into a woman named Susan Carson. I had known Susan from a previous law firm I'd worked for. She's an attorney, and uh, she said, you know, our department, the Department of Justice, the Attorney General's office, we're starting to advertise for a supervising librarian position. Why don't you apply? So I thought about it and thought about it. And that was about 10 years ago. I got the job. And I have to tell you that, professionally speaking, I've never been more satisfied. I've never been happier than in the role I play right now. We have about 250 attorneys here in San Francisco and about 1,500 statewide. We're in San Francisco, Sacramento, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, Oakland, and Fresno. 
So what do you do? I mean, what do you do with our tax money, you might be wondering? And, and who's this Kamala Harris, who I see on TV all the time? Uh, let me just briefly explain some of the functions in, that we do in, in a way that might uh, virtually have a connection to you. Uh, environmental law comes to mind. You know, we're all worrying about water and water and water and lack of water. But who sees to it that the water is being allocated fairly to the uh, cities and towns and the counties around California? And um, it's, it's a big deal. Environmental law is a big deal with us. Uh, along the lines of environmental law, any, anybody here have a VW diesel? Oh, take, how do you, how does that make you feel? <laughs> it, you know, it, we're, we are suing VW for falsifying the results of their emissions control tests, and that's not a secret to anybody. And where that's going to go, no one knows. Um, health quality enforcement. Uh, you've been to see your doctor, and God forbid the doctor says, you know, you're going to have to have your left leg uh, operated on. You got arthritis, you're going to have to have an artificial knee put in. You wake up the next day after surgery and you find that the physician, well, she's, no one's perfect, she did the right leg instead. You know, it, that happens. So, never at UCSF, of course, but no, we're getting done. Uh, so, who, who is to see that the uh, Medical Board of California pulls your doctor's license and make sure this kind of thing never happens again with this doctor. That's us. Uh, state contractors, you, you build an addition onto your house. In six months, the whole thing falls in and you're left with just a shack. Uh, who regulates a state con the state, the, the contractors in California who have state licenses? Well, that's us too. Uh, government law, someday, probably probably not in my lifetime, but maybe in the lifetime of your kids, there's going to be high-speed trains going between San Francisco and, and Los Angeles. The California High-Speed Rail Authority is a big client of ours. And that's certainly something that could have an effect on all of us in this room if we're around to see it. Um, we also do a lot of litigation in the United States Supreme Court. And Pam said to me, you know, make sure you mention that because that is a big deal. Uh, just in the years that I've been with the department, uh, 2011, the violent video games case that reached the U.S. Supreme Court. Anyone know that one? Okay, the, 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 the state legislature in its wisdom passed a law that said if you're going to be selling violent video games in California, you have to have a parental advisory on them. Anybody, this is real trivia, maybe you'll know this one too. Does anybody know which member of the state legislature wrote the law that was, lit? I'll give you a clue, he's, he's doing prison time right now. <laughs> Leland Yee was the author of the bill. Um, so we argue that one, and our library did a lot of work putting forth the state government's position in the, in the matter, and um, we got killed, it was seven to two, and uh, Justice Scalia wrote the majority opinion. But, you know, we tried. Uh, 2014, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court decides a case called Riley versus California. That involved the right of the cops to arrest you and take your smartphone and download the information, regardless of what the contents were. As long as they had arrested you, they could download the stuff. And I have to say, we weren't too disappointed when we lost that one unanimously, nine to nothing. And earlier this year, just a few months ago, the U.S. Supreme Court decided a case where it dealt with the rights of public employees, like myself, like, like Pam, uh, to join or not join public employee unions. And that was one of the goofy decisions because... It was a tie, four to four. And I think you might have been reading about that one. Justice Scalia, he didn't vote on that one, but he might be looking at the decision from wherever he is. Um, and that's certainly gonna be around uh, for years to come, the, the rights of public employees to unionize or not unionize. 
So let me finish by just briefly going over 10 very, very recent reference questions that we've done. And these have not made it to the US Supreme Court yet. Maybe they will. I want to know the top 10 California newspapers by circulation. Um, what does the federal government have to say these days on the issue of racial profiling? Um, I need some expert witnesses on the interaction of uh, drugs and chronic pain medi medication. There's a small band of Indians living out in Fresno County. I want to know the numbers of members of the tribe for the past 30 years as measured by various census information and so on and so on. That was an interesting one. Has a corporation ever been charged with murder in California? That sounds like a law and order kind of, kind of case. Uh, I want to know about the extent of high-speed internet coverage in various Southern California communities. Gene worked on that, did an amazing job. Uh, what are the latest developments in transgender surgery? And for that one, we used UCSF quite a bit to get material. Track down a, wit uh, track down a missing witness for us. We haven't heard from her in 22 years. We need to know where she is. Uh, in 1989, there was a murder case that was tried in Alameda County. What kind of news coverage did it get? And that sounds easy, but if you remember 1989, there wasn't a heck of a lot of electronic coverage of stuff. Uh, I want to report about trends, trends in compensation levels for executives of nonprofits. That had to do with, since we regulate nonprofits, and the corporate, the, the nonprofit executive was getting X amount of money. Is that in line or not in line with norms? So that's the kind of stuff we do. It's sophisticated. You're working with, with lawyers who have an inherent level of sophistication to begin with. And um, as I say to my friends, you know, usually, usually, not all the time, but usually I feel that we're on the right side. So thanks. <laughs>